Welcome back guys to EE Tech Reviews and today we got the new Sony WH-1000XM4s. I got them in silver and we're going to do a quick unboxing here and I'm going to do a little bit of comparison to those QC35s from Bose I got over on the left. I'm not going to go over how the app works but there's plenty of reviews for that. So first off they have this 360 reality audio. There's not too many songs to use at this point so I'm going to say that's just a gimmick for now but it does sound really nice when you do have audio that is compatible with that. Now the case is very nice. It almost looks like a designer case compared to the Bose. It has a nice little pouch on the back, fabric patch there. Now let's see what we do have inside. Wow, look at those headphones. Again, the XM3s, the previous generation, look very similar. We do have the USB-C cables we also have our three and a half millimeter regular cables we're going to hook it up to your regular audio jacks and we do have our plane adapter so pretty standard for any of these travel headphones the bose came with the exact same ones and initial impressions with these were that wow it, it felt light the only other thing that i did notice was that the foam pads are actually i'm going to say not as soft as the bose are but they're very very close so in terms of fit and comfort, you're basically on the same level as the Bose. If anything, the lightness that these have are definitely going to help you again as you wear them for a longer period of time. And then just do a quick weight comparison. From my perspective, the Sonys are just slightly lighter. I didn't look up these exact specs, but I just wanted to feel it by hand. Now another new interesting feature, as you'll see on the inside of the ear cup, is a proximity sensor. So when you take your headphones off when around your neck, it will know that and it will pause your audio, which is pretty great. I really like that feature. And when you put them back on your head, it notices that you're again wearing them and it will go back and play your music. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to go over exactly how the app pairing works, but all you have to do is hold down that power button like every other headphone, you're going to power on a Bluetooth. Go on your phone, connect that way, go get the Sony headphone app, and that's it. Now let's do an audio test. Hey guys, this is Mike with EE Tech Reviews. I'm currently wearing the WH-1000XM4s by Sony, trying their Bluetooth mic quality. And this is what it sounds like. And let's do a quick scientific review just to get a little bit more technical in terms of what active noise canceling actually does. And this is a great topic. I'm not going to get too in-depth. This is very high level. The credits to this are in the video and should be in the description as well, just to avoid any copyrights. Now, what anyone can do is if there's a topic in tech that you want to look up, go find some papers, some published scientific papers. This is from IEEE. It's a specific implementation that they did for their own form of noise canceling. But I just wanted to go over this very quick just to give you a general sense of how a noise canceling system actually works. So this demo, this little image right here is actually all you need to know. This little figure that you can see here. It's saying external noise. So that's just your environment while you're wearing the headphones here. That external noise will go into the microphone. And at the same time, your microphone's paired to your phone and it's streaming, let's say, music from Spotify. So audio input, that's the music that's being streamed over Bluetooth. So basically, you feed in your noise from your environment, you feed in your audio from your music, and then here it says combined audio and active noise cancellation system. After it gets processed, where it basically removes the noise, it hits the loudspeaker, which then projects what you actually hear. So it's pretty interesting. I'm not going to go over it. You can see that the, the path, if you go through this flow diagram of the blocks here, it's pretty complex. I'm not going to go over the math. But what I do actually want to do is show you this, which is a little bit interesting just to give you an idea. So this is saying that you're on a subway. And this is a subway train sound, this first graph, A1 here. This is the subway. You can see it's pretty random. And you can see as you go up through the different frequencies, the power gets louder in the signal. But in general, it's very small. 
and lots of spikes. Right, you can see going up and down a lot. That's noise. That's the shh. You can see that it's consistent throughout all the frequencies. Now this is your music signal. This one A2. Assume that's what's coming in to your headphones from your phone. Right? And just your regular audio that's your music. It's clean. And then what happens before any noise canceling, right? So this next picture here says output when noise canceling is off. Basically take these two diagrams and just add them together. So you see there's nothing here. And then this is all the noise. So in this same little block, you see how noise got added. So just the noise is there. Now, you can see using their algorithm, this like variable uh, step, normalize, least mean square, that's just their algorithm that they decided to use. You can see what it actually does. If this is what's getting fed in, A3, this figure A5 here, you can see what happens. The noise gets chopped out. You can see that the noise gets chopped out throughout everything. And even right here, you see this big spike? There's this big spike right there. Right here, right? See that spike? So you mix it with the normal music. There's another huge spike right here. So you can see these spikes stick out like a sore thumb in the overall signal. And you can see right here that it's basically gone. It's cut out. And that's basically what it is. Noise canceling takes in the noise from your environment, takes in your music, analyzes what should be there and what shouldn't be there, and more specifically, the lower frequencies. And it puts an inverted signal, or you want to say a phase shifted signal, next to it so that when the noises all add together, they cancel each other out. So noise plus no noise in your music. Go through your algorithm, it finds the noise and rips it out. That's it. If you want to get more in depth, you can actually go and read this and kind of look at the math or even simulate it. But this is just a very quick high level overview of how noise canceling works. All right, guys, let's take a look at the specs here. Some important information. Let's see. Let's start with driver unit 1.57 inches. Relatively large, no issue there. Sound is really good. Plugs, it's just good to see that we're gold plated. It just means longer durability, less corrosion over time. The cord that comes with it's 3.94 feet, which is good. And it's detachable, so you can hook it up to your computer or whatever device you're using if you want. It does have NFC, it does have DSEE Extreme. Can you really tell a difference between? this upscaled version of the audio versus without it turned on. Not too much, so I don't know if that really matters. You can use the headphones without having noise canceling on or power on. And again, no frequency response, 4 hertz to 40,000. Basically, you can generate frequencies that you can hear. <laughs> so that doesn't mean anything, really. We also see the different types of sampling rates and the streaming rates so you can see with LDAC the highest sampling 96 kilohertz you can actually get to 990 kilobits per second which means you can transfer more audio higher bit streams for higher quality audio other notable things here let's see three hours for full charge and that is 30 hours max with noise canceling on 38 max with noise canceling off bluetooth this is important. Many people probably overlook this, but I could do a whole video on Bluetooth 5.0. Um, but that basically means that they're adding extra forward error, error correction. The strength of the signal means you can go farther away. Overall, it's, it's just a more robust form of transmission versus the older versions, which is going to be lower battery, higher rates, all the good stuff that you want. Noise canceling. There's an on and off switch. Yes, it can do ambient noise. So you can lower and raise the amount of noise canceling that you want. Quick attention is good. You can put your hand over the ear cup. Optimizer, which can take in the current noise. And atmospheric pressure optimizing, which I guess only really matters if you're taking a plane and you get high up in the air. You do have touch sensor sensors. 
and input is just a stereo mini jack. Those are the two colors, black and silver. And what comes in the box is the case, as you saw in the unboxing, the adapter for the flight, headphones, and the USB-C charging cable. And just we'll go over some quick features here. Industry leading noise canceling. The noise canceling is great. If I want to compare it to the Bose QuietComfort 35s, the first gen, which I've had for over three and a half years, I'd say it's slightly better, if not the same. It's, it's a very, very minute difference. Again, it's cool. They can optimize noise canceling, which is nice. Anything else here that's worthwhile? For convenience, I like this, the speak to chat. Basically, if anyone comes up to you and you start talking, you can have it turned on where I'll recognize that you're talking and let in the voices from the conversation and actually turn off the music until you stop. And then you can set it for 15 seconds, 30 seconds after you stop talking that the music comes back, which is really nice. I actually really like it. Quick attention, as you know, which is a nice feature. They do have voice assistant. You heard the mic quality itself, not too much of a big difference there. And this is also good to know, out of the 30 hours, you can get 10 minutes of charging for five hours, which is very, very nice, which is good if you use the optional AC adapter. And anything else, the app, I didn't want to get too far into the app. There's tons of reviews on these headphones already and for the app itself. The idea is the app's utilitarian. There are so many things that you can program, you can change. One issue is that some of the settings are based on your location. And I know some people don't want Sony tracking every single location you, you, where you go just so they can adjust your headphones. It seems a little bit overkill, uh, but just a heads up if you do want it, it's, it's available. And that's about it. All right, guys, let's do the final electrical engineer's overall score. And it comes in at a 4.33 out of 5. And that's definitely one of the highest scores I've ever given to any device so far. Think of that as an 8.66, 8.7 out of 10. Now let's look at price. It's 350 bucks at the time of this filming, which is, again, middle of August. I'm going to give it a 4.35 out of 5. For what you're paying for 350 bucks, you're getting everything that you honestly could really need. This is taking something that was great with the XM3s and elevating it and just making it more precise, chiseling out the little issues and just making it whole. Now, build quality, I give it a 4.45. I think they're built solid. They do feel a little bit lighter. So maybe someone might say it's a little bit more flimsy, but overall it feels solid while you're holding it. Now, value, 4.8 out of 5. I think this is probably one of the best 350 bucks you can spend from the feature set to the comfort to the noise canceling. It does what it's supposed to do. It does it well, and it does it better than anybody else. Now for traveling, 4.75 out of 5. Again, best noise canceling out of any headphones I personally believe so far. You're going to use this on every trip. I think noise canceling is one of the best pieces of technology that we have right now for commuting, plane, car, train. Whatever you got to do, it's definitely up there. Gaming, here's where it kind of disappoints a little bit if you were to look at these, these headphones as a standalone gaming headset. Obviously, the mic quality is going to be an issue, and you'll see that's also reflected in call quality at 2.75. The mics don't sound good. I know they increased the quantity of mics, but I'm still going to say overall it doesn't sound that crisp. And for gaming... You're going to need to probably hardwire it. There's going to be too much latency if you try and go Bluetooth through your PC. Noise canceling. Again, this is top notch. I'm not going to give it a 5 out of 5 because then it could never get improved. But I'm going to give it a 4.85. I think these are top notch, the best that you're going to get. And hopefully you guys kind of learn a little bit more as to what noise canceling actually does from more of a technical algorithm, hardware, software based approach. Feature set, or battery, let's go to battery, 4.55 out of 5. You're getting 30 hours. I believe the QC35s I had were 20 hours. And if you do use an outlet with the adapter and then the USB-C cable, you're going to get a little bit faster charging. Feature set, I think this thing's packed with full of features. And let's just quickly go over it. I have it written down here. 
Multiple device support, I think, is huge. I think it still needs to get improved. I had these headphones kicked into my iPhone and my iPad, both running Spotify. I had some issues using one device to control it over the other and switching to the point where I just had no audio, even though my iPad or iPhone said it was playing. That's one issue. But overall, switching and answering phone calls on one device and going back to your music, that's definitely a huge update. Proximity sensor for wear detection, I think it's just another useful feature. It's just another one of those comforts that they added, not necessary, but it's there and it's great and I really appreciate that it's there now. Top noise canceling, it's pretty much a given. I believe the padding has been increased in terms of size, which is nice. It offers a little bit more comfort. The added extra mics, again, we said the quality wasn't that much better. The speak to chat, I also think is a great feature. Talked about it earlier, but the ability to talk, especially if you're at work or anything like that, quiet it down so you can actually have a real conversation. I think that's great. And then obviously you can do the transparency-like feature, putting your right hand over the cup so you can hear your outside environment. Again, it, it packs everything that you need. The Sony app, I'm kind of torn with this. It's still a great app, no matter what you say. I'm going to give it a 4.15. I think it does many things, which is a good and a bad thing. You have so much control over your location, over your EQ settings, over what features you want to use, the timing on all the features, how they want to work. I think that it gives you total control over everything, but for someone that might not want that experience, they just want to turn it on and use it, I think it might confuse a little bit of people there. And cool factor, I think noise canceling headphones are great. You can use them for relaxing, you can use them for work, you can use them for exercise if you really want. You can use them for anything. They're great devices, and the noise canceling is definitely the best that you can get. So what's my recommendation? The answer is yes. Just, just buy it, guys. Go hit that link. Go buy it in the description. You're not going to get anything better at this point in time. And for my quote, I'm going to say that these are the best noise canceling headphones available with a complete feature suite. So this is the end of the review, guys. I hope you liked it. Please like comment if you have any questions and please subscribe guys hopefully i can continue to bring more reviews to you all these reviews are coming out of pocket i'm not getting paid for any of these so these are my own opinions hope that you appreciate it and hope that you can learn something as well and i'll see you guys in the next review